It's all about the fabulous Cromwell course here at Nailcoat Hall, and who better to tell us about it than owner Rick Cressman and some of the golfing stars enjoying the challenge. Well, it's been a year where we haven't made any changes, but we've spent a lot of time manicuring it and really trying to actually bring the whole look of it right up to the absolute best that it's possible to make it. And uh, all my greenkeeping team have, uh, have worked incredibly hard to uh, present a course that really is quite magnificent this year, yeah. I think we'll have a fantastic test for the uh, professional players when they land on it. Beats Augusta into a cocked hat. I think the, the, the character of the golf course is superb. You have different shots to play uh, and the layout is, is just second to none. I think it's fantastic. I'd heard so many rumours before I got here, I was terrified. But I think it plays beautifully. What an asset to the hotel. It's a tough opening hole. Um, you've just got to hit it in the middle of the green. Um, it's a bit deceptive. The right-hand bunker, if you stood on the first tee, you, I'd, you'd see so many people in the right-hand bunker. The, the only thing to do is stand up there, play the yardage to the middle of the green, leave the pin alone, middle of the green, you're not going to be far from the stick. Rhodes Bank statistically plays the easiest hole championship week over the years. Very flat green, probably the flattest green here over the nail pit hall. Um, there's two bunkers just short. It's a reasonably big green as well. Wherever you go, um, it will offer a birdie, a birdie putt. And at 114 yards, it's perfect yardage for most of the guys just to hit a sand wedge in there. Woozy's Pond was named after me last year, I think, and I uh, didn't manage to go in last year, but uh, I say I went in this year. But one thing you've got to do on, on the third hole is uh, you've got to try and pitch it past the flag and screw it back to the flag and sometimes with the wind spinning around a little bit it's a little tricky to get the right club. The green slopes t towards you a little bit and you're coming downhill and uh, you know you just got to make sure you get the right distance. I don't think it'll screw back into the water uh, but it, there is that thought of it doing it. That's just one of the hardest holes on the course. You don't want to be long, you don't want to be short, you don't want to be left, you don't want to be right. And if you're on the green you've got the devil's job to two putt anyway split level green and it's uh, it's up and over and away from you so you know walk off there with a three and I'm always very happy. On the fifth if you you have to get between the trees so if the flag's on the left you really need to draw it around the trees and if it's on the right you need to fade it into the green so quite an intricate hole you need to be able to control the spin and look really well on it so it's uh, it's definitely a learning curve. Yeah, well, Jacqueline's fallen there a few times in the uh, in the past. When they put the pin on the back, it's it's really tempting, obviously, to hit the perfect shot. And I've gone over the green on a couple of occasions. I've probably as many birdies there as I've had bogeys over the years. Go for the middle of the green. Make sure you hit the green because the problems start when you miss greens. You know, patience is a key. You know, don't. Uh, uh, drop a shot and then start attacking and your score goes skywards. The flight of the golf ball is so important because uh, a lot of the good players hit um, uh, for even a nine iron there and they can land on the top and spin right back or they land a yard past the hole and they're in the water at the back. So it's, it's quite heavily contoured but I try to get all my amateurs to hit it just a bit to the right edge. It's much wider at the right edge. Even if it tickles that little old oak tree it seems to come down on the edge of the green and you can make three or at worst four. But if you go in the water, it's a high number. You just have to judge the flight of the ball. You have to know how far you hit it. I'd like to see Bernard Langer around here because he's pretty good at that. Very small green. There's water on the back left-hand side and the green's, the green's not flat either. So you, you, you've got a pitch on the front portion which is slightly angled towards you um, to hold it on the green. So the best angle of attack is to go straight or slightly to the right hand side of the, of the, of the flag um, and that should stay on the green. If it doesn't it will probably go into the back bunker which is very very deep but that's better than going in the water so it's one of those holes where there's not much room for error you've got to get into maybe a, a three or four yard square area and, and then you should have a putt for birdie. It is a tricky one yeah it plays about 145 yards slightly uphill to an elevated green which makes it very difficult to get, get the ball on the green it's, uh, for me it's probably about an eight iron and if you miss the green it's very difficult to get up and down uh, it's big it's really tough shot short if you're in the bunker that's a really tough bunker so it's probably the hardest hole on the course at Nalcott and you're always happy to walk off with a three.